Hello and welcome back to the chicken pen. It's early spring here and at this time of year we start to think about breeding our chickens. We breed using broody hens and today I'd like to take you through the journey from egg all the way through to hatching. So join me. Hi, my name's Fiona and this is Cindy and Cindy is one of our Buff Orpingtons. Buff Orpingtons are a fantastic breed, they have natural broody tendencies so they love to sit on eggs and hatch them out. Now there is a hormonal imperative involved so we have to wait for them to be ready and it's normally when the weather warms up. So at the start of spring now we're starting to think about the process to get ready for a new breeding season and today I'm going to take you through that whole process so you can see what we do and then maybe it might be right for you. So come and join me. Do you want to go down? You've been good. You are a star, aren't you? Good girl. There you go. Thank you. Breeding chickens is really rewarding. There's nothing better than watching young chicks running around chaperoned by their brood mothers. The great advantage of incubating using broody hens is that they teach the chicks from day one how the dynamics in a flock work. They understand their place in the pecking order without injury or insult to the group. Because they grow up knowing about those dynamics in a mixed age group, it's easier for them integrating into a new flock if you choose to sell them on. So it's great for your buyers too. One of the things I would urge you to think about before you think about breeding chickens is that 50% of the eggs that hatch will be male and I know that sounds obvious but it's so easy to think that you're going to get hens and that's going to be fantastic but you will get some cockles as well. What's going to happen to those cockles? Where are they going to go? Selling them is very, very difficult. A lot of people don't want them and you'd be surprised at how difficult it is to give them away. If you have a breed which can be used as a table bird, that may be a solution that you can use. But if you haven't got a plan, please I urge you to think twice and think very, very carefully about this is the route you want to go down. There are two ways to get fertilised eggs for your hens. You can buy them in. There are lots of sellers out there, either professional breeders through their own website or hobby breeders who sell their eggs on forums or selling sites such as eBay or prelove.com. The other option is to have a cockerel to fertilise the hen's eggs. This is our current cockerel jack. He's unrelated to the current hens. In autumn, we buy in 12 fertilised eggs and select one cockerel from the clutch to be the breeding one. As there are more than one in a clutch, we have the chance to watch them grow and can select the one with the best combination of size, colour, conformation and temperament. And this is how the eggs are fertilised. It can look a bit brutal, but the hens do want to be around him and they do present themselves for mating. Let me introduce you to Frankie. Frankie is one of our breeding buff Orpingtons and at the moment we have 18 hens and one cockerel and even though that's a fantastic ratio the cockerel can have favourites and that means he treads them an awful lot so he wants to mate to them and mating to them as you've seen means that he actually climbs on their back. Now if he's on there an awful lot you can get something called feather wear and Frankie is starting to ex exhibit some signs of that and this is what feather wear looks like so just below the base of her tail he's actually started to wear away the proper waterproof feathers on top and now you've got the down exposed. If that's left too long she can actually end up with a completely bald patch. So tonight I'm going to fit a saddle to her just to alleviate some of the pressure on those feathers and hopefully that will mean that there's no more problems. Are you ready to go love? You've been very good. 
That's my girl. Off you go. Thank you very much. Here she is modelling the saddle. It has two straps that fit over her wings and it's very easy to put on and of course take off. It means that when Jack wants to mate with her, his feet are in contact with the saddle and not her feathers. This is a very practical item and it's designed so that she can still access her oil gland which is just below her tail. Anything that gets in the way of that would mean she wouldn't be able to preen properly and waterproof her feathers, but this works tremendously well. Anyone who's heard this call from the chickens knows that this means an egg has been newly laid. If your cockerel has been active with your hens, now is the time to collect them. And here they are. You might notice that the bedding that the eggs are sitting on is clean. That's because as soon as the hens are let out, we clean the coops every morning. And that's to remove any overnight poop. There's a good reason for us doing this. We don't want to wash the eggs. Every egg is laid with a natural protective coating. If we wash them, that coating is removed and the egg could become vulnerable to bacteria. So the best way for us to guarantee a successful hatch is to leave them unwashed. Most hens like to lay the eggs in exactly the same place. So like me, you could wait until later in the day and collect them all at once. I'd like to show you how to store those eggs that you've collected. It's very simple and all you need is a permanent marker pen. So when you've collected your egg, you'll notice there's a pointy end and there's a blunt end. It's important to store the eggs with the pointy end down and the blunt end at the top. And that's because there's an air bubble inside and you want the air bubble to settle at the top. Now what I do is I mark the eggs in some kind of way and if I'm going to be storing them for some time I'll mark the date on the egg and I'll do it in at least three places on the outside. Now today is the 12th of March so I'm going to write 12th of the 3rd. If you're in America you put 3 stroke 12 but here in the UK it's 12 stroke 3 which I've never understood and then simply pop that into an egg box and you can store those for at least two weeks before they become unviable. I've been told by some people you can store them for three but I've never stored them for more than two. Then you can set them under your broody hen for incubation. So let's show you that part next. This is Ginger and she is showing us the classic broody hen look. We describe it as the flat chicken look. The hen spreads their body out as much as possible to get the maximum coverage across the eggs. You'll find if you pick them up and inspect them, they will have plucked the feathers out from their breasts, but it's very, very cleverly done. They leave just enough out of feathers that when they stand up, you wouldn't know that the feathers were missing at all. And you can only tell by lifting them up and inspecting them. They do this for two reasons. The first is to line the nest hollow that they make and the second is to provide the option of skin on egg or skin on chick contact which helps regulate temperatures for egg and chick. You may see the flat chicken pose but you'll be more likely to encounter what we call the bad tempered eagle chicken where the broody hen is protective over the nest. Putting the eggs under a broody hen isn't difficult. Some people slide their hand underneath the broody hen and put the eggs there. We don't like to do this because it's possible one might get broken. After all, you can't see what you're doing with the chicken in the way. We prefer to wait until the chicken is off the nest. You can do this in two ways. You can either lift her off and place her outside or you can wait until she leaves the nest naturally. Hens will normally leave the nest once a day for a short time just to eat, drink and evacuate their bowels. Once the eggs are in place in a nest, she'll simply sit on them as if they were always there. She'll move herself gently over the eggs, lifting her chest up and over before wiggling to get the eggs in the best position next to her skin underneath her.
Using a broody hen makes the brood period really, really simple. You give them the eggs and they look after everything for you. This is Cindy, who's brooding on a clutch of eggs now. She appears to be sitting completely still, but in reality she's operating like a highly sophisticated incubator. The best high-end incubators make sure that the temperature and humidity are optimal for eggs, and that's exactly what Cindy's doing here. What you can see now is that she's turning the eggs too to make sure that the chick inside that egg doesn't stick to the outside. That means that when it comes to hatching time, the chick can make its way out in a very, very straightforward process. There are some things that are really useful to know about caring for broody hens. The first is that the incubation period is 21 days and during this time, as I've already mentioned, other hens will come into the coop and try to lay their eggs. It's best if you can rehome your broody hen into a coop all on their own. Here you can see one of our brood coops. This coop has a run on it as it's in the field with other hens. This means that Gannett, who you can see in the run for her daily stroll, can stretch her legs without fear that Sage, who you might have seen wandering down the far side of the run, popping in and laying her eggs in the nest. Not only would that risk viable eggs being pushed out of the nest in favour of eggs that won't hatch because they haven't been incubated for long enough, but it also risks viable eggs being broken when the new hen lays her egg. If you don't isolate the hens, this is what could happen. This is Sage backing out of the coop, dragging Ginger off her nest in a very dramatic fashion so that she could have the prime laying spot. This is a very, very quick way to end up with broken viable eggs. The second thing to know is that once a day your hen will pop out to eat as much as possible, drink as much as possible and evacuate the bowels. If you notice that they haven't done this, you may have to carefully lift them off and pop them outside. This is what we've done here with Cindy. As you can see, she's a bit bemused to begin with, but very quickly she wakes up and then there's an explosion of energy. It's perfectly normal. It's just a release of all that energy after sitting in the same place for such a long time. Once the 21 days are over, your brood hen will ensure the hatch goes without a hitch. At this point, it's a great idea to put a chick feeder and a chick drinker into the coop. We normally place these within reach of the nest site, as during the hatch, it's more for the benefit of your brood hen than for any chicks that hatch. The chicks absorb the yolk sac just before hatching, which means they are fine for up to two days without food or water. It's designed this way so that the brood hen can carry on hatching eggs without leaving the nest and the maximum number of eggs can be hatched. Sometimes eggs can continue to try to hatch when the brood hen leaves the nest with her chicks. If you would like more information on this, a link to a detailed video is at the top of the screen. And that's it. That's all there is to setting eggs and hatching using a broody hen. I hope you found that useful. If you have enjoyed this content, take a moment to give me a thumbs up below. If you're not a subscriber, take some time to do that now and click the notifications icon and you'll get to know of any new videos as soon as they're published. I really look forward to seeing you next time.